Every time in mathematics that we define some new kind of algebraic operation, we should go through and prove a list of different algebraic rules that this new algebraic operation satisfies. So for example, in linear algebra, when we're studying the matrix vector product, we want to then go and investigate, well, what kind of rules does this matrix vector product obey? So in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you how can you prove one of these new algebraic rules. And the first thing to say is an algebraic rule is something that's completely arbitrary. So for example, here I have something called distributivity of the matrix vector product over vector addition, by which I mean when I, when I take a matrix A and I multiply it to the bracket vector B plus C, then it obeys this distributive property. This is just going to be AB plus AC. Now, we want to prove this in complete generality so that no matter what your A matrix is and no matter what your B and C vectors are going to be, that this property is going to be true. So the first step is you have to use arbitrary notation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write my A matrix in terms of AIJ notation. So this is the generic M by N matrix with M rows and N columns. And then the matrix vector product is only even defined if you have some alignment between the sizes. So the B and C vector both have to have N different components to be able to align with this M by N matrix. So we give them a B1 down to a BN and a C1 down to a CN. Now, before we jump into the actual proof, I want to remind you how this matrix vector multiplication actually works. And it works a little bit like this. That is, if I wanted to take the generic A matrix and multiply it by B, I'm only going to look at A times B right now. So if I want to do that thing, that was defined to be, well, the B vector became the coefficients, the scalar multiples in this linear combination. So it's going to be B1 times the first column of A plus B2 times the second column of A all the way down to Bn times the nth column of A. So that was just the definition of how this matrix vector product worked, and certainly we're going to have to use that definition when we try to prove this larger distributivity property. Now, for any of these algebraic rules, it's going to work a little bit like this. You're going to begin with a left-hand side. So that's the left-hand side of my equality, the matrix A times the sum of the vectors B and C. And then I'm going to do a bunch of work, and I'm going to be done when I get down here at the bottom to the right-hand side, AB plus AC. And so what I need to do is fill in all this stuff up the middle, but it might be taking more than one screen. So I'm just going to begin on the left-hand side, and I have an unbroken chain of equalities until I get down to the right-hand side. And if I've done that, I've done my proof. All right. So the first thing I want to do, my first obvious step, is let's just use that general notation that we defined with. So I'm just going to come in here, I'm going to fill in my A matrix, my B vector, and my C vector with the general notation. All right. Now, what can I actually do with this? One thing I know is I know how to take the sum of two vectors. I know how vector addition is defined. So let's leave the A matrix untouched, and let's take the B and C vectors and smush them together into one vector. And then I'm going to get something like this, the same A matrix, but, but multiplied by the single vector whose components are the B1 plus C1 all the way down to the Bn plus Cn. So now I have a matrix multiplied by a vector, and I can do the definition of the matrix vector product. And remember, the definition of the matrix vector product was that components of the vector became the scalars in the linear combination whose columns were the columns of the matrix A. So in other words, what I first have is the first component of the vector, the B1C1, multiplied by the first column of A. And so what it looks like is something like this. And then that goes all the way along until I have the final scalar, which is the Bn plus Cn, that number, that scalar, multiplied by the final vector, which is going to be the A1n down to the AMN, the nth column of the matrix. So what have I done? I've applied my matrix vector definition, and I've got up this nice linear combination. All right, what can I do with that? Well, I have scalars multiplied by vectors. And we actually have two different choices here. One way would be to apply some other algebraic rule that said, look, I know what happens if I have the sum of two different scalars. I multiply it to a vector. It's the first scalar times the vector plus the second scalar times the vector. Maybe we've separately proven that as an algebraic rule, but I'm actually going to go through the process and assume that we don't have that shortcut of this previous algebraic rule. Is that what I'm going to do here is take this scalar, and I know how scalars times vectors work. What do you do? You take the scalar and multiply it by every single component. 
So it's going to look a little bit like this. The, the B1, C1, it goes into the A vector. And then the Bn plus Cn goes into this nth vector here as well. So I've sort of taken the scalar on the inside. Now, remember, we're trying to prove a distributivity rule that the matrix vector product distributed over vector addition. And what I'm in effect going to be doing is if I look inside one of these vectors, if I look at, say, B1 plus C1 times the A11 thing, that's just numbers. This is a sum of numbers multiplied by another number. We know distributivity of numbers works. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to bring it up to the top. I just moved it up. And now I'm going to go and work with any of these vectors. So the B1 plus C1 times A11, that can distribute out. And what I get is this. I get that B1 times the A11 plus C1 times the A11 in that top left corner. And then I can carry on everywhere else. So in effect, what I've done, I've gotten halfway through. Start with my definitions, and I moved all the way along until I finally could apply a distributivity property I did know, distributivity for just normal old numbers, but I had to sort of collapse everything to being inside of a vector first. So now I'm just going to unpack it and pull everything back up into its original formulation. Uh, that is, I'm going to go and take these vectors that have these b's and these c's, and I'm going to separate them out. So what I get is a vector where I've only got b things multiplied, and then I've got a different vector that's only got the c things multiplied. I'm going to keep these as separate. This is just the definition of vector addition, that the sum of two vectors is the vector where all the components are the sum of the individual vectors. Now, this is great. The only problem is I go some b's and then some c's and then back to b's and then to c's. I'm just going to smush them all together. So let me again move that thing back up to the top. Same equation. haven't changed it. Just moved it up to the top. I'm just going to reorder the terms. I'm going to put all the things with the b's on the left and all the things with the c's on the right. And it's going to look like this. So a bunch of linear combinations with only b's and then a bunch of linear combinations with only c's in them. But we've seen these before. Uh, this thing where you've got the coefficients are the elements of b and then the columns of A are the vectors, it's a linear combination there, that's just the definition of A times B. And then likewise, the one where you've got the C components multiplying the columns of A, that's the definition of the matrix A times the vector C. So what is this? This is A times B plus A times C. And that's exactly the right-hand side that we were trying to show. So what do we do? We started with the A times B plus C. We ended up with the AB plus AC. We used entirely general notation. We applied our definitions effectively, our definitions of a matrix vector product, our definition of the sum of two different vectors. And we manipulated it until the distributivity property that we really wanted was, in a sense, inherited from the normal old distributivity property, just of numbers, all the way done on the inside of a vector. All right, so this basic approach can be done for any of the different products we might have seen in linear algebra. In the future, we're going to see a matrix times a matrix. It's going to have its own rules. You're going to apply the same basic techniques to be able to show that you have some algebraic rule and to prove that that algebraic rule is indeed valid. And I'll finish off by just putting up the full computation on the screen for you.